My role is to speak about friendship between Ljubljana and Belgrade in the area of robotics and bioengineering. Nevertheless, I will start with Mihailo Pupin. He was not really a bioengineer. He was neither a roboticist, but he was a good friend of Slovenia. He first had a Slovenian teacher already here in Serbia, in Idvor, and then he had a good friend who was help him, helping him during his first beginnings in New York. And then he had the chance to return this friendship for Slovenia because he was present at the peace conference in Paris and because he was also a good friend of American President Woodrow Wilson, he succeeded that the Lake Blade, which is the jewel of our country, remained in Slovenia. And now at the Lake Blade, we have the monument of Mihailo Pupin. Now I will make a big jump from Mihailo Pupin to 1982, when the National Academy of Sciences in United States of America decided not anymore to support single visits of individuals from Yugoslavian academies, but instead to organize a joint meeting. And this joint meeting was the meeting of National Academy of Sciences and of Council of Yugoslav Academies, which was active at that time. And this was exactly what I'm talking about, bioengineering and robotics. And the title of uh, the meeting was Movement in Man and Machine. The, the meeting was organized in Porto Roche, in Slovenia, and the main persons organizing was Professor Vodonik uh, and also uh, Professor McGee, roboticist, uh, working in, in uh, the area of multi-elect robots. There were very important roboticists at that time, like, uh, like uh, Professor Roth, expert in kinematics, like Professor Paul, the author of the first textbook in robotics, uh, also rather important uh, persons uh, from biomedical engineering like Hunter Peckham working on uh, tetraplegic, electrical stimulation of tetraplegic hand and uh, Professor Mann from MIT and of course Jim Reswick whom we can call as the father of rehabilitation engineering. I will not make a big mistake if I say that Yugoslavia was represented by Belgrade and Ljubljana. There were three groups and the areas that these groups were working at that time were medical robotics and there were the head was Professor Aiko Tomovic and Dejan Popovic and Serbi Katurajlic. We all are here. Then the second group was from Ljubljana, electrical stimulation of neuromuscular system, Professor Vodonik, uh, Uroš Stanic and myself, and then the group of Professor Bukobratovic from Belgrade. At that time, they were interested in dynamic control and modeling of manipulation in robots. And the group of Bogatovic, there were also Professor Wilko Potkonyak, who is also here, Dragan Stokic and Vesna Cvetkovic. And this is inter we, we published also quite a big proceedings, some 500 pages. And you can find this proceeding on the web page of National Academy of Sciences, but not at the Serbian Academy and neither at the Slovenian Academy. We are not so much proud about that because we are always inventing something new. And of course, because this was movement in an and machine, we needed also some medical support. And this medical support was given by Professor Ljubiša Rakic, who was at that time studying systems regulating behavior. Uh, Professor Dimitrievic, neurocontrol of paralyzed movements. And from Ljubljana, Professor Gracanin, working on external control and substitution of impaired motor function. Of course, we heard already very much about the Belgrade hand. Uh, today we have uh, many humanoid robots and all these robots have five fingers, but in my times there was just Belgrade hand. And we already heard that uh, this hand had uh, 
capability of voluntary control by EMG, the capability of force control through the sensors that were built into the hand, and also of a very interesting way of pre-shaping the fingers. But Professor Tomovich was also interested into the phase of reaching, the phase when the hand is approaching to the object. And uh, he uh, determined two things, actually. That this phase of approaching is very similar to all of us, that we are doing this in pretty much the same way. And the secondly, that the, this pre-shaping of the fingers in the face when the hand comes close to the object is based on uh, geometrical primitive and not really on the shape, uh, exact shape, of the object. So this was a kind of inspiration for our work also in Ljubljana. And uh, we made such an experimental surroundings that the robot was holding the objects. And this object was a thin plate, a cylinder, and um, a block. And uh, the robot was placing these objects into different positions in the space, into different orientations, and also making unexpected perturbations. While the subject had uh, the markers on the fingers, on the tip of the fingers, and his task, her task, was to uh, grasp the object, which was through the magnet attached to the robot, and bring, bring it back to the to the table. Uh, so in this way, uh, we uh, established an area which we called Pentagon, so the tips of all the fingers, and we uh, measured it uh, by the help of, of these markers. And we found out that this Pentagon is first increasing, it has a bell-shaped curve, and then uh, is uh, again, decreasing when coming close uh, to the object. And interesting enough that the horizontal projection of this trajectory is a straight line, which was already determined by Professor Tomovich. In addition, uh, we also defined another parameter important for this approaching phase, which is the angle between the normal on to the object and normal uh, to the uh, to, the, to this pentagon. Uh, and you can see that first there is a sharp rotation of this angle, which means the rotation of the wrist. Then we have a kind of a transport phase where the angle is not changing much. And then again, a rapid rotation at the end, which means pre-shaping of the fingers close uh, to the object. And again, uh, similar to what Professor Tomovich was saying, there is not much difference between different people uh, and also not much difference between different objects and not much difference between uh, when then, then some perturbation occurs in the movement. As the next example, I will uh, say a few words about pendulum test and collaboration between Dejan Popovic and myself. Spasticity is something that occurs in patients after central neuron lesion, mainly these are hemiplegic patients and uh, spinal cord injured patients. Spasticity is something which is tested by therapists so that they induce a movement and they feel the resistance to this induced movement. But instead of inducing the movement, we were using gravity in order to measure the spasticity in the muscles governing the knee joint. So the subject is placed like this on a table. The therapist brings the leg to the horizontal position. Then the leg is swinging. And uh, during the swinging, we are measuring the angle of the knee and also the EMG. So what is happening? is that, for example, in the case of a healthy person, the leg is just swinging around the neutral position. There is no EMG. When we have a slight spasticity, this spasticity stops the swinging already during the first swing, and there is an EMG present. Uh, more spasticity, moderate spasticity, the leg is slowly coming to the neutral position. There is EMG at each negative slope. 
and even with uh, severe spasticity, the leg is almost not swinging, and EMG is present through all the all the trays. And we defined also different indices how to evaluate spasticity. The most important was this relaxation index, which is the ratio of the first amplitude of the swing and the neutral position. And it's uh, interesting enough that this was uh, one of the papers that was the best cited uh, from my papers and papers of Professor Vodonik. And uh, this was quite old studies, but were recently uh, continued by Dayan. Dayan improved first instrumentation by replacing goniometer with an optical encoder, by adding accelerometer, by adding gyroscope. But uh, more important is that uh, he was able to distinguish between extension and flexion spasticity. Here is an example of moderate spasticity, an example of extension spasticity, an example of flexion spasticity. And this can be distinguished by assessing the difference between the areas below and above the neutral, the neutral uh, line and, and the goniogram uh, in these two cases. And uh, furthermore, he fitted the, the sinusoidal curve with the with exponential curve. And in the case when this exponential curve starts from the positive value, we are speaking about extension spasticity. When it starts from negative value, it's an extension spasticity. And also the value of exponent is important because it tells us about, about the uh, severity, about the intensity of spasticity. If I continue with uh, education, then both uh, professors, Professor Aiko Tomovic and Professor Vukobratovic were also professors at University of Ljubljana. Uh, Professor Tomovic was uh, teaching about nonlinear systems, while uh, Professor Vukobratovic was teaching about uh, robotics. Uh, I was mainly uh, involved in teaching in robotics. I remember that Professor Vukobratovic was afraid of flying, so he always came, always came by a night train. Uh, I was already waiting him at the railway station and then accompanied him to the hotel, and then he was lecturing in the afternoon, and uh, the lectures at that time were all about the dynamic modeling of robots. And he was teaching like this uh, for three weeks, for example, coming for one day uh, in, in three consecutive weeks. And after that, Vesna Cvetkovic came and she made uh, a practical example for the students. And then the students had to develop their own projects. And uh, this was again an inspiration for us, both professors. Uh, we already heard today that Professor Tomovic published all his textbook in Serbian and uh, English language. And the same is true for Professor Vukobratovic. And we copied this idea. And we also have the books in robotics published in Slovenian language and also published in English. And, uh, uh, published by Springer Verlag. And this is very good now when we have more and more Erasmus students and just because of these English books and also because robotics is interesting, they are mainly choosing robotics at our university. So being the president of Slovenian Academy, let me finish with a few thoughts about our academy. Our academy is uh, 81 years old. Uh, it, is, uh, it has only 100 members, and right now among those 100 members are only nine engineers. But biomedical engineering, biomedical engineering was always very important. So first we had Professor Vodonik as a biomedical engineer, then Professor Kral, who was also the rector of University of Ljubljana, and uh, I'm the third biomedical engineer of our academy. 
In Ljubljana, we are also very proud that we had first academy already in 17th century, when the first European academies were established. In uh, 1693, we had uh, so-called Academia Operosorum, Academy of Industrious People. And in the same way, we are very proud that we have uh, very important corresponding members. We have 84 corresponding members. All of them are characteristic for all of them is strong collaboration with the science or arts in Ljubljana. And among them, the first was uh, Professor Tomovic, and you will probably recognize Professor Milan Dimitrievich, who is very active still here and in Ljubljana, and as the newest one, uh, Professor Dejan Popovic. Uh, one of important things uh, that we are organizing in Ljubljana is the same what we are doing now in Belgrade, remembering our past uh, members uh, or important Slovenian scientists or artists. So uh, we published a book about our important phys physicist uh, Anton Peterlin, chemist Max Sametz, and in this year also Loise Vodonik. I brought the book also here to the Academy, and there is a lot written also about, of, about Rajko Tomovic and the collaboration during the years between uh, Slovenia and uh, Serbia. Uh, so let me conclude with a sentence that uh, Professor Tomovic wrote in my memory book at our, at our country house. And it says, the value of our cooperation is not only in our scientific contacts, but also in developing rich human relations. Thank you.